The early days of the World Cup have seen two horrific head injuries, one of them causing significant facial trauma and both of them bringing about a lot of questions regarding FIFA's concussion management. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and if you're new here and enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy mechanisms of different sports injuries, then consider subscribing to the channel for all future videos. The first one was a collision with Iran's goalkeeper Ali Baranvan and apologies if I'm not saying these names correctly as I'm gonna try my best. You can see here as he comes in, he just incidentally makes contact with the English player's head. And thankfully in this case, it actually looked like his nose absorbed most of the impact, which is different from the one that we'll look at with Yasir, the player from Saudi Arabia later on. We can see that collision a little bit better here from this view. Again, you can see how his nose thankfully takes the brunt of this impact compared to just square on the face or the cheek even like we saw with the Saudi Arabian player. So here we're concerned about number one, a concussion, but two, injury to the nose, like a nasal fracture for their goalkeeper. We'll of course address the water splashing and the smelling salts and just how terribly managed this appeared, but let's look at the other injury first. Now let's look at the mechanism for Yasir al Sharani. So we can see here the Saudi Arabian goalkeeper comes in, completely incidentally strikes sort of the left side of al Sharani's face and cheek with the front of his left knee. Remember, the front of his left knee is going to be the patella or the kneecap. So basically a bone with minimal cushioning in front of it. So this is like bone directly landing into now the side of Al Sharani's face as opposed to with the Iran goalkeeper, it was more square on with the nose. So now in addition to a concussion, we're gonna be more likely concerned about facial trauma like a fracture because of where that impact came in on the side of his face. And this picture shows it best, where we can see the goalkeeper's left knee has been landed more on the side, where you can actually feel this bump called the zygomatic process on the left side of your face. We'll dive into the anatomy of both of these injuries and then talk about just the terrible management of concussions so far in the World Cup. But first, back to the old studio for a quick message from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Geology. Trying to make heads or tails of skincare routines leaves most of us just forgetting about it altogether, which then leaves our skin in bad shape. Geology creates simple and effective skincare and hair care routines customized just for you with simple, proven ingredients trusted by dermatologists for decades. The process is simple. Just go to the link in the description and take a quick 30 second quiz that walks through what specifically you're looking for in your own routine. Everything is then delivered to your front door with clear instructions of when and how to use it. My regimen features an everyday face wash, a morning face cream, a nighttime repairing cream, and then an eye cream. Plus Geology recently introduced this hair co-wash, which I've been using for the past month and it can honestly say it's been great. It makes my scalp feel really clean in particular and doesn't rely on all those harmful chemicals like most typical shampoos. Right now, if you head to the link below and use code DRBRIAN50, that's D-R-B-R-I-A-N 50, you're going to save 50% off your trial set plus 30% off that new hair co-wash. Stop putting off taking care of your skin and treat yourself to something nice this holiday season by checking out the link below to again save 50% off your trial set and 30% off the hair co-wash. Thank you again to Geology for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. It's already been reported for our Yasir that he has significant facial trauma, fractures of likely multiple bones of the face and potentially the jaw, in addition of course to the concern for a concussion. If we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, you'll see this big prominence on the left side of the cheek. This is where a bunch of bones come together to form something called the zygomatic process. It's that bump that you feel when you rub just below your eye socket. You can obviously see here on the image how the knee basically lands square on that zygomatic process that's protruding from the face. The bones in this area are the zygomatic bone, highlighted here in yellow, the maxilla, which is the upper portion of the jaw, and then behind that, we're going to have the mandible, which is the lower portion of the jaw, and then this little tiny arm that comes out from the temporal bone. Deep to all of this is going to be the sphenoid bone, and all those are sort of coming together to also make up the eye socket or the orbital socket. There's a classification you might hear about with these types of facial injuries called the Lefort classification, where we have a type one, a type two, and then a type three, basically describing what portion of those facial bones have fractured and sort of how many pieces of the face, so to speak, are movable because of the trauma. The severity of these injuries also goes just beyond the broken bone because of course we can see how that zygomatic process in part contributes to the orbital socket, which contains the eyeball and the muscles of the eye, but then there's also a lot of nerves, there's a lot of blood vessels that run through this area, so it's a very complex, significantly really traumatic injury beyond just what we think about from a standard broken bone. With Baron Von's injury, the secondary concern after the concussion is likely some sort of nasal trauma. Now on his nose, really the only bones in the nose are going to be the nasal bones that sit right up here at the bridge of the nose. But all this down here is actually soft cartilage. It can technically break, but not in the same way we think of for a bone. 
all of this tissue in the front of the nose are different pieces of cartilage, the same material that you'll find in your ear that's very flexible. And thankfully, we have our nose there to sort of take some of that impact. The cartilage is softer, it can cushion things a little bit more. And so while the concussion is certainly not a good thing for Baron von here, the fact that the nose was able to absorb some of that trauma rather than it landing directly on the cheekbone like we saw with Al Shirani is definitely a better scenario for the risk of underlying facial trauma. The big thing we worry about with nasal fractures in the short term when recovering sports is something called a septal hematoma. Basically, the septum is the lining of the cartilage that goes down the middle of the nose, and you can develop bleeding or a big hematoma that forms beneath that cartilage, and if it's not adequately drained, it can lead to death of the cartilage of the nose and a very destructive, nasty process. It's rare that nasal fractures themselves need to be surgically repaired, and again, we're usually talking about just these two little nasal bones higher up. The cartilage getting smashed in the front really is not that big of a concern. We're more so worried about whether or not there's a septal hematoma and then any potential trauma to the deeper bones kind of behind the nose. So now let's finish up with just concussion management so far that we've seen in the World Cup. It's no mystery to anybody that there is a lot that can be approved when it comes to concussion and head trauma management in professional soccer or football. At one point, it looks like they might've given him some smelling salts. Of course, we saw one of his teammates come up and just splash some water in his face, thinking that might sort of wake him up, I guess. Both of which are definitely not acceptable things that you wanna do when you're trying to assess somebody for a concussion. Didn't look like we saw any assessment of eye movements or balance or coordination, things that you need to be doing when someone has a head injury. And the challenge here is that the nose trauma sort of overshadows it in the moment and gives them something to tend to and manage the bleeding on the pitch, but it didn't really look like they did any concussion assessment. And then of course we saw after the fact, a few seconds later, a few plays later, he went down and had to have himself removed from the game. Something that should have happened in my opinion much earlier on. Then with Al Shirani, we saw him basically lay motionless on the field for an extended period of time before play was finally stopped. And I don't know if the official thought that they were sort of faking it or what, but he clearly wasn't moving. Clearly he had just taken a huge knee to the head and someone could have stepped on it. This could have been so much worse, but they just let play continue. Thankfully, they at least got him out of the game right away, and it sounds like he's already on his way to the hospital for management of his facial trauma. And I'm sure us medical folks sound like a broken record with this, but there's just at this point no excuse to not have temporary concussion substitutes at all levels of professional football. You can't say that you care about player safety and then not implement something as simple as this. They should have independent evaluators, something that we've seen in American football in the NFL, somebody who's not affiliated with the team who can spot these things, who can come in and do the assessment, because right now, it is just like the wild, wild west of head injury management, depending on the country, depending on the team, and it's really downright dangerous and just unacceptable at this point. Second impact syndrome is a very real thing where you could potentially die if you suffer a second concussion so quickly after suffering an initial concussion. And it sounds extreme, it sounds crazy, but these things have happened, these things can happen, and we really, really, really need temporary concussion substitutes to get these players off the pitch do a proper assessment, have some unaffiliated independent evaluators. Otherwise, you just can't say that the game cares about player safety. So that's it for the video. Two very significant looking injuries, both kind of highlighting some of the limitations with concussions in professional football, one of which very traumatic with Al Shirani's facial trauma, the other which seemingly to just be a concussion unless we find out about any underlying nasal trauma. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.